And at this point, confidence, I know that Brad Wade is with us. Yep, I'm here. Hi, Brad. Hi, Maryles. How are you doing? Hey, it's great to see you. Usually, we're all on the same stage together, but I am very happy to be in the same place at the same time with you as we kind of close out um, our second conversation, our second Digital Citizenship Summit in Nigeria. Yeah, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to be here, and it's nice to see so many faces uh, that I recognize. I mean, you know, I, I, I first want to thank you and Tola for putting this event on. Uh, it's so nice to be a part of it many times over. Uh, and it's so nice to see so many of the familiar faces. Eugenia, uh, Rob, Kemi, uh, everybody. I went through and take, took a look to see who's all here. It's nice to see everyone. Thank you for joining us all around the world, not just in Nigeria, but everywhere around the world. Uh, I'm honored to be here and I'm coming to you from Detroit, Michigan in the United States. So thank you. So Brad, I just want to make sure I'm going to let confidence if she wanted to jump in because she's the host for the summit in Nigeria. And then I'm, I'm going to put myself on mute. Perfect. Yes, I'd love to hear from her. All right. Thank you, Maria. Hello. Hi, Brad. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. How are you doing? It's nice to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming around here. Nigeria, though we are not together, but we are in the same virtual space. Thank you so much. So, not to waste time, we would love for you to just kick off with the final note on the future of learning. Yes, it's, good, it's, it's already a technology field future. How can we embrace it? How can we fit into this whole new era of tech, tech in the house, tech in the school, tech everywhere? Please carry us on how we can go about the future of learning technology. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Thank you so much. I, I can't wait to share. Thank I love you. what you guys are doing. I hope to get over there with the group uh, sometime in person in the future. Uh, yeah, so I'm happy to share uh, some of the things that we can do, uh, glimpses into the future, but things that we can do now, kind of sharing the technology. You know, the learning in the classroom is really, and you, you've probably heard a lot of this today and throughout uh, time, really it's about engagement, engaging students in learning, getting them invested into their own learning. And so how can we do that? And technology is one of the ways that we can capture students. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of things out there, you know, and I love that in, in Nigeria and Africa, one of the big pushes has been to get access, access for students. That's so important to get access. So what I'm going to talk about is some of the things, the technologies that we can use to engage kids in learning and get them really excited because we know as teachers and educators, once we get kids invested and excited in their own learning, they just, they can go so far. And so I, I'm happy to share some of the quick things that uh, you guys can, everyone can get started with pretty easily. Uh, now, what's the best way to do it? Should I share my screen? All right, I'll, I'll give this a try. Let me see. Let's, I'll give this a try. All right, how is this? Can everybody see my screen? Okay. All right, confidence, can you see that? Yes. Okay. I assume that's a yes. Somebody give me a yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Perfect. Yes. okay. All right. Yes. Okay. So I'll yes. go through, I'll go through this. So, so uh, this is the future of learning. Oh, let me play this like that. There we go. The future of learning. Okay. This is who I am. This is my contact information. Pretty much everything I'm going to talk about today is out there somewhere. You can go to my website. You can email me, connect with me on social media, whatever you like. Uh, I'd love to be connected to everyone here that is here today and participating and everyone that is watching in the future. Thank you again for joining us. So in this presentation, it's going to be pretty short, pretty brief. So I want to get right to it. Um, this is the future of learning that the two big things we're going to look at are five awesome technologies for learning and five awesome jobs for students. Now, as teachers and educators, it's important for us to know just a little bit of a glimpse of what is out there, the technology so we can bring it into the classroom. But then, the, the, you know, the important piece is the why. 
the why, you know, when we're working with kids. So we're going to take a look at just five unique jobs that are out there, and there's thousands, but we're just going to look at five quick ones that uh, students are really excited about. And the skill sets that come with those are very important for us to learn in this evolving new workforce. So let's take a look. All right, so who am I? Uh, I'm a teacher. I was in the classroom for 15 years. I taught third grade and fifth grade, so young kids. I'm also a father. I have three children of my own, uh, two boys and a girl, the loves of my life. I'm also a speaker. I go around, this is what I do for a living. And the reason why I do that is because of this. I'm passionate about education technology. Anybody that's met me or hopefully has seen me speak knows that this is true. This is what I love. I love connecting and bringing this in, connecting people, bringing technology and getting teachers, students excited to improve their path of learning so they can really grab hold of it and build a better future for themselves. All right, so here are five awesome technologies for learning. All right, the first one is augmented reality and it's called AR. Uh, that's the short version. So augmented reality and the next one's virtual reality. And I'll go over the two real quick. Augmented reality is using a, a device, a phone, a tablet that you look through and you're getting digital information. Like this happens to be a dragon that I colored in a coloring book. Well, looking through a device, a tablet or a phone, I can move and manipulate that digital asset, that dragon. Well, you can also think about it like this. Let's say you look at a picture of the, uh, the earth through your phone. All of a sudden the earth pops up and it's a 3D hologram basically. And then it has the moon going around it. So that's what augmented reality is. Looking through a device and, and managing and learning from digital assets. There are incredible programs out there, incredible libraries with content and lessons. I'd be happy to share in the chat, or if you want some of those resources, just ask me, connect with me after, I'll share that. Uh, that's augmented reality. The next one is virtual reality. So this is where you're actually wearing a headset. You're wearing something that you do not have feedback to the real world, okay? You are truly immersed. Now, the thing about the difference between augmented reality in addition to that is, augmented reality, this one, whoops, this one, the masses, everybody can use really quick, really easy. All we have to do, everybody, if, if there's 30 people in a room or however, everybody has a tablet or a phone, they can have this experience. Virtual reality, you know, you have to have the headset, okay? So the, the access is a little more limited, but the experience is very high very high. The, the environment is very rich. You can go inside an environment and build a car, learn how to work on an engine. You can go build a home, work on redecorating something. You can learn how to cook. So in virtual reality, think about anything you could do in the real world, you could do in a virtual world. The, the great things about that is um, one of the good things in classrooms are taking these field trips. So every, in every classroom and every school system around the world, we're learning about our own cultures, but then cultures all around the world. Now with virtual reality, we have the opportunity, and you can even do this with augmented reality, go around the world. You can go see the Taj Mahal. You can go into the museums all over the world. You can go into the Eiffel Tower. You can walk the beaches somewhere. Uh, that's what the ability of virtuality does. It actually can take us all around the world. Uh, we're starting to get some really powerful lessons uh, that bring us closer as humans. One thing I like to say is technology is actually making us more human. And I'll give you one of the examples. One of the examples is, think about this. I live in the United States. I live in Detroit. Uh, I don't live in another country. Well, now with virtual reality, I'm now getting the opportunity to go into, like I'll use one in Australia as an example. There's a virtual reality uh, lesson where you can go in and you can be, have the point of view as one of the indigenous peoples from uh, you know, a long time ago. And you can go and learn about 
their culture and their history and a day in the life, you know, whether it's gathering or hunting and, and tribal, you know, tribal ceremonies and stuff. That's just one example that has given me an experience that I would never have. So it gives me some understanding. There are also great things about empathy, you know, being able to get into someone else's situation and understand what their life might like be like. And the nice thing about that is, you know, that's where we're learning a lot about empathy. And there's all kinds of wonderful things in virtual reality. And for sake of time, I'll, I'll move on just a little bit. So that's augmented reality, virtual reality. This next one is called mixed reality. What this is, is this is when you are uh, wearing, typically wearing, um, you know, a head, you know, like a glasses or something or a helmet. And you can still see the world around you, but you're interacting with either like you can see a stylus or you can use your fingers. Um, again, very, very high experience, uh, a little more limited because you have to purchase the equipment. Okay. Now let's go to this one. All the students are super excited about this one. And I'll go into the awesome jobs in a minute. Autonomous robots. Autonomous robots are being used all over the world, everything from agriculture to transportation to manufacturing. So the great thing about it is autonomous robots and robots in general are very engaging for students because they love to see the mechanics behind them, see how they're working. Well, now what we're really looking at for students is what are the skill sets? What are the lessons? How do students get involved in coding and programming? And you know, what are the STEM programs or lessons that are involved? Uh, great organizations all around the world helping learn with that. There's a connection from autonomous robots to something I'm going to share in just a moment. So autonomous robots uh, and robots in general are becoming very, uh, very large field in the workforce. And so that's a, it's a very big one. Students can build little Lego things, build different robots, program them in classrooms now, and that translate to skill sets in the workforce as they go out and work on their career. So that's number four. And number five, I'm very excited about as well, is artificial intelligence. Now, the thing is, is you may be asking yourself, Brad, how does artificial intelligence or AI play out in the classroom or in learning? Well, the thing is, is artificial intelligence is impacting most people's lives on a daily basis. And a lot of times we don't even realize it. If you have, a device with Alexa or Siri or something at home, that's already an AI or an artificial intelligence. And think about this. I would, I'm going to ask you a virtual question. Raise your hand if you've ever asked Alexa or Siri or anybody uh, a question, right? We all have. What is this? What is this? Well, think about it. AI is becoming a support, a support for students and learning. Okay, they can inquire and there were actually, there are actually now some uh, curriculum out there that ha have artificial intelligence built in. I know there are some, there are some algebra, some algebra curriculum that has artificial intelligence involved with them to help students learn and teach. There are robots that are out there that um, companies are building to help students work on uh, math and language and grammar and we'll assist them. And we'll also uh, you know, give you feedback on how engaged a student is. If they're, if they're paying attention, if they're not paying attention, they can read the muscles on the face and, let, and give feedback saying, that looks like they don't understand. Imagine that, think about that. You know, I would love to be a teacher everywhere and we'd love to have more and more and more teachers, but think about, you know, an hour where a student doesn't have access to a teacher. We have programs now that can help students learn and can actually be reading the muscles on your face and say, you know, they'll actually say, did you understand that? And they're asking based on, you know, what your facial expressions look like. So artificial intelligence is really coming around. It's a very big, um, 
a very big impact in learning and education. Uh, we're not really talking about you know, robots taking over the world. We're talking about assistance. We're talking tutors. We're talking student support. So those are the five technologies that are really impacting students now and are really going to start impacting students even more in the future. Augmented reality and virtual reality, huge right now. The entry is pretty easy to get into. Uh, things like mixed reality, uh, autonomous robots, and artificial intelligence are here and they're starting to make more headway as we start to understand how we use them with students, how we use them in the classroom. So those are the five technologies. There's a lot more, but those are the five that are having huge impacts now. And to go with that, let's take a quick look at five jobs that are out there that we need students and their skill sets. So let's take a look at that as we ponder. All right, five awesome jobs for students. Let's take a quick look. All right, digital or IoT architect. Well, let's think about, let's unpack that real quick because there's a lot going on there. We know digital, okay, that makes sense. Architect, okay, that makes sense. So let's just start with those two, okay? So think about students, like we have students, we know when we're working with students that are four, five, six years old, we know there's a certain set of students, you know, boys and girls that like to build. They like their hands on, they like to build with the blocks and do things like that. We also know there's a handful of students that like to play on the computer or really good with the tablet or the phone. So the nice thing about something like a digital architect, this is a, a job and a skill set that is necessary now for students. Uh-oh, I hear some microphone back there. Um, for students, this is for students who like to build in, they can build on a computer or build build in a virtual space. So the thing is, is there are um, there are now digital architects in many, many, many companies, especially big companies. And what they're doing is they're designing office space. They're designing what the factory floor looks like. So really doing the, like think about the building, but just in a digital space. And the letters IOT stand for Internet of Things, uh, stand for Internet of Things. And what that means is being connected to the Internet. And I can go on that. Uh, if you want more about IOT, just jump on my website. I'll share more about that. You can find some more resources. So digital architect is great. All right. Industrial computer engineer and programmer. Okay, so this is, you know, anybody programming with a computer and working on many, many, many different things. It can be the autonomous robots, it can be robots in a factory. We're going to look at that more in just a moment. All right, a modern data scientist. So the nice thing about this graphic is it shows math. It shows the areas that you would be working on, areas that it needs strong participants in. This is a good one I like to share with students. Um, so we have math and statistics, we have programming and database, communication, visualization, uh, all the soft skills and everything. So that's modern data scientist. This is UX designer, UI designer. I usually ask how many of you are familiar with that and not many people raise their hands. But let me, let me explain it this way. We all have one of these, we all have a computer that we're on. There's always two aspects to all of that. One is the UX, which stands for user experience. This is someone's job to talk about how we as humans interact with the computer, what the buttons are like, what the touch screen's like, okay? So that's UX, user experience. UI is user interface. What this comes from is comes from person who's building it, saying, all right, I'm building the software program. I need people to be able to go in, log in, look up their account, open the program, execute, whatever it might be. So those are two different jobs and they're both, they work hand in hand. And that demand is so big right now. And you can, you know, make very good money. All right, a robot coordinator. Think about that. I have not, I've, every student in class I've shown that to have just fallen on the floor right now because they're like, oh my God, I wanna program robots. I wanna be a robot coordinator. Think about this, uh, in the manufacturing world, especially right now, in the uh, autonomous vehicle world, 
there are, think about this. Some of you have probably seen, you know, we see the drones, right? We have the drones that people fly. You've probably seen the displays of the little mini drones and, you know, there's a thousand of them flying together. That's an example of a robot coordinator. There's also in large industrial plants around the world. It's interesting. So when I saw this for the first time, I felt like I was in the movie of Star Wars and saw a little robot driving on the floor. I'm like, what is that? Well, on these large industrial companies around the world, they have these little robots that just drive all around the plant floor. Well, what they're doing is they're, they're taking parts from one another. They're moving inventory. They're even cleaning up. Well, someone has to program this fleet of, think about you know, like your little iRobot vacuum cleaners. Think about if you had 50 of those you had to work on and those, what, those were what you worked on every day. So robot coordinator, is awesome. That's another one. Um, and so like, where is, where is this happening? What's well, happening in the classroom? Okay. So all of this, it's happening in the classroom. It's happening in a plant and it's even happening in space. Okay. These skill sets, I'm just pointing out a few different jobs. Most of them have a lot of the same skill sets. What we're really trying to do is prepare our students with the skills for today and tomorrow. And those skills are important because then once they have those skills, they can get into so many of the jobs, not only ones I mentioned, but many more. All right, so now let's take a, just a quick, this will only take a minute, what industries need this? So we've already talked to students about, all right, and teachers, we're doing this as an education, as teachers, we're like, okay, Brad, what's the tech involved? And we looked at the five techs, some with very easy entry. Then it's like, okay, so what are some of the jobs? Just give me something so I can excite my students. All right, we looked at that. So we got two. Now it's like, where is this going on? Well, it's everywhere. We've seen that, you know, classrooms, space, plants, workspaces. Now it's like, let's take a look at what industries. Okay, let's see what industries are out there that we're preparing students for. Let's take a quick look. Automotive, all around the world, automotive. Medical. Okay, medical is using these technologies. Manufacturing, you see some of the robots, you see an engineer programming a robot right now. Bank and finance, everything. Agriculture, the crazy thing is now is, you know, we do agriculture from a very, from a very uh, simple, you know, my, my dad, my father is a farmer. Uh, he was also a colonel in the military, but he was a farmer and he's farming again and he farms very basic. He has a tractor, no technology, still does it, you know, the traditional way. When we're talking about growing agriculture and crops for, you know, you know, for the entire plant and stuff, those tractors behind there have tons of technology. They have satellites, they have GPS, they have um, AI, they have artificial intelligence uh, looking at the the amount of moisture in the ground and does it need to be watered. There are even tractors now that are autonomous uh, that can go and do everything on their own. So, you know, it's so many different areas. Construction, you know, there's construction going on everywhere. Power and utilities. Uh, the nice thing about the power utilities is, you know, this is where technology is keeping workers safe. You think about if you climbed up, you know, 200 feet up in the air, uh, you'd really want the use of both your hands. Well, what's been happening is, you know, the worker has a tablet and so they really only have one hand. So what they've done is they've started making, you know, this gentleman's wearing a, a headpiece. And what it is, is it's like having a tablet, but it's all voice activated. So he has his hands where he can work and stay safe. Um, aerospace and aviation. We're now able to look inside of machines and equipment and engines and see what's going on. We can work remote. We can you know, have somebody join me on a video call and talk to me about a piece of equipment. Um, engineering and heavy equipment. This is where people are learning how to, uh, how to drive you know, a construction, a piece of heavy equipment. Uh, anything that's safe or, or super, anything that's dangerous or expensive, virtual reality is really helping us learn because if a piece of equipment's a half a million dollars or a million dollars and I'm teaching somebody how to use it, I'd love it if they can do it in a virtual environment first. 
or if a job is very dangerous and it's somebody going to be working at very high up in the air, I'd like them to get trained in a virtual environment first so it's safe. So you'll see a lot of that. Um, transportation, logistics, uh, oil, gas, mining, I think you've realized everywhere. All this technology is everywhere. And remember, as, as teachers and educators, our job is to really connect with all the students and just find out what, what are they interested in? Where, where can we help them? What can we bring in? Because we as teachers know that if we can bring something in that's going to engage our student and help our student, we'll take it. We really don't care what it is. We're non-discriminatory. We'll bring everything in. Like if you say this will help your student, I bring it in. So it's really kind of being educated in a broad sense. So we understand, okay, here are some technologies I can look at. What can I get access to? And then when I do have access, how do I use them? How can I use them in my lessons? And then how can I get the why out to my students? So they understand like, okay, look, I know you want to do this. Or how does this look? Do you like building? Do you like using your hands? Do you like programming? Do you like working on a piece of equipment? Do you like working with numbers? Whatever it might be, it's out there. And our job is to inspire them and engage them. Uh, so, you know, this is it. So now's the time. I'll just skip through this real quick. And uh, oops, let me do that. I will stop sharing and I will jump back on. So uh, I know I kind of went fast there. I wanted to keep it very, very simple uh, as far as kind of the pieces that we're looking at. I hope it was useful. This is something I love. If you, if you have more questions, um, please reach out to me on social media, uh, email me, whatever you like. I'd be happy and I'd love to work with anybody that is joining us today. If you are here, drop me a note. Uh, I'd love to see how I can uh, assist your school, your students, you yourself, if there's anything I can do. Uh, I believe in this. I believe in the power of education. I know what good it can do. And so I'm here to support you as we learn you know, all about digital citizenship and technology and how they go together. Uh, and I'm just thrilled to be part of this. Thank you. Um, again, Confidence and Mary Alice and Tola and everyone. Uh, I don't know if you have a, a question or two, uh, but I'll, uh, I would love to come and spend time with people anywhere you are. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Brad. I don't know if there is any question for him. Anybody has any question for him? Yes. Any questions? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Yes. Um, Brad, Brad, thanks a lot. Um, that was that was awesome. Okay. Uh, the part where you had the robot coordinator uh, got me laughing, really, um, because looking at the technological landscape in Nigeria, <laughs> that's going to be like a cool phone. <laughs> so, um, but that's, that's, that, that's great. Now, um, I want to just uh, something, and that's the fact that educators ought to be vulnerable when it comes to technology. Because you know, there's this, there's this, um, there's this, uh, do I say, antagonistic mindset that many of our educators here in Nigeria have. And I, I, I feel that at this summit, we should also um, um, talk about that. The, the fact that technology is not replacing you, except you're not willing to adapt, then there will be no choice than to have technology sweep you off. Because most of these things that you have mentioned, um, Brad, are things that are automated. So when you have a teacher who is not willing to, to, to get on board the, the new technologies, then such a teacher may have to be excused. All right. So uh, vulnerability, that's just what I wanted to I wanted to add. And um, a final question then is this. When we talk about inclusiveness in the digital citizenship message, right? Um, Inclusiveness may take away the humanity when we start to look at machines. Can you address that? 
So I, I believe, so great, great points. Being vulnerable as a teacher is very necessary. We need to understand that technology is coming. Even if we don't understand exactly how to use it, we can ask our students to help. We just need to understand as educators that it's coming. How do we uh, acknowledge, not only acknowledge it, but then how do we welcome it and use it to our own benefit, to benefit our students? So I, I agree with you there. Um, you know, the, 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 the second question there about, you know, the technology and, and if it's taking our humanity, what, I, what I'll, I'll say is it is a lot, a lot of it's automated. I, I said, uh, my phrase I like to say is technology is making us more human. And, and I'll share the second part of that. What I believe is, and I've seen a lot of this as companies go more, um, they call it lights out is something. Lights out is where we could run a plant in the dark because it's all automated. Okay. Well, the reality is, is if you're running a plant that's all automated, there are no humans there. Correct. We know that. Um, but the thing is, is think about the jobs, it's not these, these autom automization and robots are not taking jobs. What they're doing is they're changing the jobs humans do. Think about this. If I'm working in a plant and all I'm doing is, you know, doing one thing over and over and over and over and over again, that's not very human. I'm, I don't have to use my brain. Okay. If I can get a, a, you know, a machine to do that, fine. Well, what that does is now somebody has to take care of that machine. Okay, I have to use my brain to understand that machine. I need to use my brain to understand how the business works. And so in that sense, it's taken me from doing a mundane thing that I not thinking about to where now I have to think about, oh, okay, I need to understand how this machine works and the bigger process. So, you know, it's just, it's shifting what we as humans are doing. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying like we still, we still need people to do everything, but what it's doing is actually changing the lens of what we are doing uh, as jobs. We're getting different opportunities and being able to use our brain and our thinking even more. So uh, I could go on and on and on, but I would love to talk to you more um, anytime about what you're doing. I'd love to chat with, with your group or anything sometimes. So uh, yeah, I would love to. Thank you for you know sharing your thoughts. I appreciate that. Thank you, Brian. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, 